Upton with Ann Upton Art and today we are going to be learning how to do this KitchenAid mixer. Now I kind of have done this video backwards as you can see my mixer is already 99% done but there's a couple things that I didn't go over when I did my first video so I'm kind of going to go back around and try and explain some of it after the fact. So first let's go over the materials that we need to do this now obviously you need a mixer um, my mixer is the one that goes up and down this way uh, there's a couple that you turn a lever and it lifts up and down you probably could use that one as well and then you're going to need some sticks and uh, some frog tape or blue tape some kind of tape that you like to use that has the good lines when you pull it off you're going to need mixing cups I use dispersion colors from Counterculture DIY, and then I also use acrylic paint from Bria Reese acrylic um, paint. And then the last thing you'll need, and I'm sure I'm probably forgetting something when I'm making this list, but uh, one of the other things you need is Floetrol. This is your pouring medium to thin out your paint. Oh, you're also going to need some sandpaper and you'll need a spray finish sealer. I use two different sealers to finish and I will show you guys those at the end. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is disassemble the mixer a little bit. So to do that, everything that is silver on here comes off, either with a screw or unscrewing it yourself. I've already started disassembling it a little bit and I've taken the front plate off of here. I just unscrewed this and I already have the screws off of here and I'm just gonna take this off. The screws, if you're looking for them, are located in the back of the machine right here, and you would just unscrew it right there on both sides and then lift it off. And then, as well, there are vents right back here, and there's a vent underneath here. You're gonna to wanna to tape those off as well. And then there is a silver plate right here that has three screws, and we're also going to take that off. So after you have all of your silver items taken off, just set them off to the side because you don't want to get any paint on them. And then the next thing you're going to do is apply your green painter's tape to these areas that you just took off. So you would put it right here and you don't need to make it fancy. So you'll apply it to the area that the silver was and then you'll come in with an X-Acto knife and you will cut along that line so it makes a really, really smooth line. And then you'll do that all around the whole machine. You wanna make sure you cover the hole in here with tape. And then you definitely want to cover these vents in the back. These vents, if you get paint in them, it could lead to a fire hazard when you use your machine because the vents are what um, ventilates the machine when it gets hot to run, when it's running. So you definitely don't want to get paint in there. So I've got a sanding block and I would just run over the whole machine, scuff it up really well. Acrylic paint does not take well to surfaces that are really smooth. So if you do not do this, then you won't have a good surface to put your gesso on and then to put your paint on. So I know it's scary because you're scuffing up a perfectly good KitchenAid mixer, but go to town and really, really, really scuff it up with a sandy block. And then after you scuff it up, that's when we're going to add our gesso. So I cover the entire machine with this acrylic gesso. I cover every surface area that's going to have any paint poured over it. So sand it first, then gesso, and then we can get to paint mixing. Okay, so we have our machine prepped, we've sanded it, and we've done the gesso, and now we're gonna prepare our paint. Now this is an important step because how you prepare your paint really determines how well it's going to pour over your mixer. So for this project, the main paint that I use is these dispersion colors from Counterculture DIY. One of the reasons I use the dispersion colors is because they are super concentrated pigments and they already are very thin. This is a liquid paint pigment, so it's a lot more pigmented than a normal acrylic paint and it's a lot thinner, so you use a lot less of it. 
So when you're mixing it, I would do about a one to four ratio. So I would add a quarter of this to four to five times amount of Floetrol. This is a pouring medium. It's called Floetrol. You get it at your hardware store. And this is what you're gonna use to add to this. So as you can see, I don't have much in this cup at all, maybe half of a centimeter. And then I'm going to pour almost the whole cup's worth with pouring medium. And it does not really alter the color of it too terribly much. And that's why I like it. With the paints that I'm using, I would be doing about a, um, maybe a tablespoon of paint to two to three times the amount of Floetrol. So the ratio is a little bit different, but the main thing that you want to remember when you're doing acrylic paint instead of the dispersion paints is that you still want the paints to be the same consistency. So regardless of what you do, your consistency, consistency should be about like uh, thin honey. You want it to pour very, very, very easily off of your stir stick. Now, the most important thing with any of this is do not add silicone. A lot of people that are doing acrylic pours add silicone to their paint to get the cells that they want, but I can tell you that silicone make it nearly impossible to take the silicone off in order to seal it. So whatever you do, do not use any silicone in your paint. These dispersion colors from Counterculture DIY and the pouring medium have different enough viscosities that you don't have to use the silicone. You aren't going to get the same crazy cells that you do with it, but with a project like this, you really don't need it. And it's much more important that your machine, you're able to seal it than having good cells. Because if you cannot properly seal the paint, then your machine will crack, it will chip, and it will not hold up to all of the um, wear and tear that a machine like this is gonna get. It's not like a painting where it just sits on the wall. This is something that hopefully you use every, you know, every week. So do not use silicone and don't risk having to deal with the uh, long-term effects of what that will do to your uh, sealant. After we've completely prepped the mixer, like in the previous slides, we're going to start mixing our colors together. So when mixing colors, I always start with a white base layer because I think this gives all of the colors something really well to mix with. And then I alternate my dark and my light colors. I of course use blues and a couple shades of metallics and a lighter purple and pink. I definitely recommend using complementary colors though when mixing so that you avoid the colors um, muddying up and turning something green. So just remember to take a look at your color wheel and layer colors that are friendly colors. So don't mix any greens and yellows right next to blue unless you really want a kind of dark brown or some unfriendly colors. So we're gonna mix it up and then we are going to start pouring it over. So this is really the fun part. This is where you get to add the colors to the mixer that you worked so hard to prep. There is absolutely no wrong way to do this. And just make sure you cover all of the little nooks and crannies with paint. If your mixer is one that tilts up, make sure you tilt the mixer in the up position to make sure that you get paint on that little section and ensure on this part before you start pouring that you definitely covered those vents and covered all the little holes so you don't get paint in the engine and break it later. So I'm just about finished adding paint here and I'm touching up a last few spots before stopping. And when you are done with all the paint, I definitely recommend propping your mixer up um, just so the paint drips off it. I would use something extremely sturdy like paint cans because the mixer does weigh probably close to 15 pounds. So if you can elevate it so that the paint all drips off and let it dry for probably a full week. Acrylic paint often feels dry 
on the outside while still remaining wet on the inside. So definitely make sure that it's completely dry before moving on to the next step, which is sealing. Now, after you have done as many coats as you want to get the shine you'd like, you get to reassemble the piece and add back all of that metal that we took off. And that is all you have to do. Now you just get to enjoy your work of functional art. And for more videos from me and Upton Art, you can find me on Instagram at Ann Upton Art, or I'll be posting weekly videos here on YouTube. Love and aloha, guys, and have a great day.